It's not weird to get excited about the concept of a hard R teen sex comedy, as weird as that sentence sounds coming out of my mouth. And not because you get to see teen sex comedy stuff, but just the idea that somebody is willing to make a movie like that that comes with an R rating. Where they're maybe not trying to get the biggest possible theoretical audience of 13 and 14 year olds and 12 year olds into the theater, but are instead saying, no, this is only for, you know, slightly older kids, kids that can get into our movies, you know, 18, 19 year olds or whatever it is. Okay, so the, conceptually a movie like Project X is maybe kind of interesting. It's certainly got an interesting marketing campaign. It's made by an unknown director starring a bunch of unknown actors about the biggest teenage party of all time. And the genesis for the idea of the story, obviously without having done any research, is this viral uh, web clip of this Australian teen kid that threw a party that went so out of control that it ended up being on the news and he got sued and he got charged and he went to jail and I think they executed him or something and um, anyways Nima Nurazade is the director from the producer Todd Phillips who directed and produced the Hangover series they gave him 10 or 12 million bucks to go make a teen party movie and you know it's not cynical at all to think that guys like this put a whole bunch of ostensibly teenage girl boobs in a movie to get money that's you know a transaction that's been happening for almost as long as movies certainly as long as photography has been around. Where it gets weird and you start to feel paranoid, well, I certainly did watching Project X, is when you get the sense that they're putting so many teen boobs, so many context-free nipples and girls shaking their butts seductively into the camera, that it seems like a sort of self-handicapping, where they think, okay, this movie's already going to be, you know, criticized by people if we put in so many boobs in, it'll seem like the criticism is a moral one when people are saying, oh, Project X is a bad movie, it's got so many boobs, that's a dog whistle thing that goes out to teenage kids and they think, well, if adults don't like it because it has boobs in it, it's gonna be amazing. The thing is, let me be very clear. I don't like Project X, not because of the teenage boobs, I don't like it because it's a bad movie. It's not very well put together. It looks like a rap video where the rap band is three, uh, you know, suburban 16 or 17 year old white kids that somehow are given the ability to control a throng of 60 playboy college uh, co-ed looking model girls, then they say, take off your shirt, and they all take off their shirts. It's absolutely idiotic uh, adolescent male jerk-off fantasy in a bad way, because that's not always a bad thing. There's no story. The director is a guy that directed music videos for a really long time, and a large part of this movie is actually a music video. There's a lot of slow motion music, a lot of people dancing, a lot of girls actually jiggling their ass in the screen, a lot of girls, you know, rubbing their boobs underwater into the camera. It's not got its sights set any higher than just being kind of titillating and put in the context of teenage sexuality kind of gross and greasy. It's not very good uh, because of that, and it's not, it's not that it's got too many boobs, although it has too many boobs. It's bad because it doesn't have a very good story, and it's not very well written. So what should you watch instead? Watch a movie that was smart enough to have teenage girl boobs and was an adolescent male jerk-off fantasy, but was also clever enough and had enough of a story that it was able to recontextualize the teenage male jerk-off fantasy over teenage girl boobs and make that part of the story so that it becomes about teenage sexuality and teenage anxiety and stuff like that rather than just an exploitation of teenage sexuality and anxiety. And watch Fast Times at Ridgemont High, directed by Amy Hackerling. Ryo doesn't like it. He, did, he says, you know, it was talked up too much and then when he finally saw it, he didn't like it. But it's um, absolute, it's a near masterpiece. The great shame of the 80s was Amy Hackerling kind of peaking early and then making a bunch of funny, if not particularly, you know, intelligent or remarkable movies after that. Oh, that's maybe being unfair to Amy Hickling. She made a bunch of landmark movies, just none of them that had the kind of chutzpah that Fast Times at Ridgemont High did. So watch that instead.